distinguished party leaders, the advisory council held the general assembly meeting to review the 2023 general elections, elections and the resolved as follows. IPAC commends Nigerians for their active participation in the 2023 general election. The servants since the return of democracy in 1999, in spite of all the challenges we faced before the elections. The right of the people to choose their leaders is the bedrock of constitutional rule. The ballot is sacrosanct and must reflect the will and the mandate of the electorate in a free, fair, credible, transparent, inclusive, and peaceful election. IPAC will resist any attempt to subvert the people's mandate freely given to any political party and its candidate and urges stakeholders in the electoral process to respect the wish of the people as sovereignty resides in the people. It is the only way we will collectively deepen the nation's hard-earned democracy. Council also charges the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to sit up and take its constitutional duty seriously to avoid the preventable glitches and hitches with its uh, bimodal voter accretion system, Beavers, and INEC result the portal, RF, that questioned its readiness to conduct the elections and the authenticity of the result declared, particularly in the presidential and national assembly elections. Council also demands a review of the process in appointing INEC resident electoral commissioners to ensure only competent and patriotic Nigerians head the Commission's state offices across the nation. As some of the challenges encountered during the elections, particularly the use of beavers and RA portals, were caused more by human factors than the equipment. More importantly, the Commission must be transparent and upholds its neutrality and integrity as the electoral empire and discharge its duties without fear or favor, as only INEC will be held responsible and accountable for the success and otherwise of the elections it conducted. IPAC urges the judiciary to be decisive and uphold the rule of law in educating on various election petitions before it as the last hope of all aggrieved citizens. Aware that time is of, of the essence and justice delayed is justice denied. All solemn mandates must be retrieved to uphold the sanctity of the ballot box. Council condemns in strong terms violence, killings, arson, kidnapping of electoral officers, intimidation and suppression of voters that characterized the 2023 general election. They are outrageous, despicable, and unacceptable in the quest for sustainable democracy in Nigeria and must be stopped forthwith. Vote buying, snatching of ballot papers, and boxes remain the bane of the nation's electoral process. Accordingly, Council demands that the immediate prosecution of electoral offenders and their sponsors to serve as a deterrent to those who desire to subvert the will of the people. It is the only way to sanitize the country's electoral process and procedures so as to ensure that the people's votes count. It will also spur citizens' participation in future elections, unlike the, presidential, the, pres, the unprecedented voter apathy witnessed in the 2023 general elections, especially the governorship and the state. House of Assembly elections. IPAC urges INEC to start preparations for the off-season gubernatorial elections 
put its act together and ensure future elections in the country meet minimum international standards. The integrity of the Commission is at stake each time it conducts flawed elections. The expectations of Nigerians are high and must be met in our collective resolve to build a strong, virile, united, progressive and just democratic nation. Council commend the nation's youth who took advantage of Not Too Young to Run Act, contested and won national and state legislative seats, particularly those in their 20s. It is the beauty of democracy. Council will continue to deepen our democracy, ensuring an environment conducive for successful elections and sustainable democracy in Nigeria. Thank you for listening. Thank you. So, uh, from AIT on uh, what we mean by stolen mandate uh, and you want in specific terms which of the elections are we referring to we are talking about the 2023 elections and you cannot but agree that there were a lot of infractions you know, in the conduct of these elections and as the strong, one of the key stakeholders in the building of democracy in this country, that is IPAC, meaning the political parties. We cannot pretend that what happened, happened. And what it translates to you know, is that votes to, in some cases did not count. And therefore, if votes do not count, what does it mean? It means stolen mandate. And thank God, the process itself has a cure for some of these things, that, you know, these infractions. That one, INEC has opportunity, you know, to, to review the, the results, and if announced, you can seek redress. So the essence of seeking redress is to recover what has been taken away illegally. So that's what we mean by stolen, you know, a mandate. We cannot tell you specifically which election we are talking about. But those who are involved are already before the courts. And the only reason why they are there is to recover what they believe was stolen from them because of things that happened in the elections, both presidential and governorship in the House of Assembly, and of course, National Assembly elections. Because in all cases, there are parties that are already before the courts to do exactly what we are saying. So we are now saying that judiciary should step up to the plate and ensure that those stolen mandates we are found to be stolen are returned to the legitimate owners. So the another question you asked was whether judiciary uh, can be relied upon. I think something, that's what you said. Well, judiciary is part of our democratic you know, system. It's, it's, it's constitutionally you know, uh, 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 provided for, for you to have an institution. As you know, we have three uh, 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 arms of government. You have judiciary, executive, and also legislative. And it is for the purpose of the fact that things can go wrong. That's why you have judiciary to now make amends where necessary and ensure that you know, we have democracy uh, uh, which serves everybody. So I'm sure usually is also interested in what is happening and they want to, they want to strengthen democracy too, you know, regardless of what you know, people may think. But they are Nigerians, they are people that, uh, aside from the fact that they want to leave legacy, good legacy behind, they have uh, their, their, their uh, children and also generations yet are born that they would like to be kind to them. So I believe Jushan will, will really rise to the occasion this time around because not only Nigerians are interested in what has happened. The entire community you know, uh, has also shown you know, uh, interest in what happened and the only uh, institution that everybody is looking up to now is Jushan. I'm sure they are going to really uh, you know, step up to the plate, like I said, and give a good account of themselves. I have no doubt at all. I have uh, 
you know, very strong belief in our judiciary that they will deliver. Vanguard asked whether the, uh, the observers, I mean, what people say about the election in vote buying and violence characterize this election, and, and therefore, uh, what do we think? Well, uh, I'm sure a whole act is in the making to address some of these issues, which is the Electoral Offenses Commission Act that is before the National Assembly. And not only that, we also have the civil society you know, groups, you have political parties, leaders like ourselves, we have you, the press men, that are not happy with, about what happened. You know, that we are still yet to move the needle, the needle as far as vote buying and violence is concerned in elections in this country. And the only way it can be dealt with is through this interaction, through uh, 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 you know, uh, people talking about it, taking steps. Like I said, the National Assembly is already taking steps through the, uh, the act that uh, Electoral Offenses Commission, I mean, uh, act that I believe will also come to uh, effectively, you know, put this thing in proper perspective and perhaps, you know, uh, solve the problems for us to a very large extent. And then don't, don't also forget that I don't think there's any country in the world today where elections take place without some one infraction or the other. So it is not peculiar to us. But what is perhaps not happening in our own climb is the fact that we are not able to fight the fight this thing effectively as we should have you know and we all know one of the reasons uh, one of the reasons is that you have what you call the power of incumbency you know which we are battling with a situation where you have all the agencies that we are looking up to for free fair credible election appointed by one individual who is the mr president who belongs to a party that is interested in the elections so this is why we have a problem with fighting vote by fighting violence, you know, fighting impunity in the system. But again, it's a process, like we said, democracy is not a destination, it's a journey. We're already in that journey. All these things happening are things that will strengthen democracy so that we don't throw away the baby with the bathwater. These things are not peculiar to us, like I said. But there are issues that are there, fundamental issues like they all have mentioned where the INEC chairman, the Inspector General of Police, the DSS, all the agencies you want to perform are accountable to one individual. So this is the problem. We must address it. You know, otherwise, no matter what we do, we will still be where we are today. It's a vicious cycle. But we know the problem and we are capable of solving that problem. The man from Guardian, you know, uh, asked the question about the protests by, as regards the uh, chairman of INEC uh, being responsible, I mean, uh, resignation. Well, the fact of the matter is that, like somebody says, when elections are taking place, even if you are running for the office of the governorship or president or whatever, you are running for the, of the, of the office of the man that will have to accept all the blames. You know, if you are the head of an institution, whatever happens, of course, you are the one that will be blamed for it. So those who are asking for the head of the chairman of INEC, yes, out of frustration, who else are they going to ask to resign? Is the chairman of, uh, of the commission. But the question you ask yourself is that, is this single individual, as a human being, can he really control all the gamut of, you know, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the organization that is put under that human being to control? That's why some of us have been asking for the, uh, you know, the organization of that uh, agency so that some of the resources will be given to other agencies for effectiveness. That's why we are saying so. And they, like we mentioned, I mentioned in my speech, appointment of REC, of REC that is uh, Resident Electoral Commissions, should not be done by Mr. President and then by politicians who have interest to now and then send them to, to the chairman that doesn't even know this man he has no control, you know, this man, for what it takes, may even be saying that, well, we have, the person appoints you, appoints me too. So we are drawing, we have the same uh, authority and the same power, you know. So these are the things that we must take a look at 
and make some corrections because there are fundamental errors in, in, the, in the makeup of that organization. So that's why people blaming Mahmoud. I mean, as the national chairman, I don't know which, which INEC chairman was not <laughs> you know, blamed. But the issue is that what are we doing as, as a nation ourselves in taking a, taking a look at the makeup of that organization and its performance and function? Is it, is it functional the way it is? You know, can, can it meet the requirement of uh, the objectives, of the goals, or of the, the assignment given to that organization? So what we are saying is that you, you also know you see, when INEC is conducting these elections, they have what they call ad hoc staff. These ad hoc staff, in most cases, you know, the INEC chairman, even national commissioners, or even Rex, and sometimes they don't, they, they don't even know them, because names are compiled by politicians and sent to the to the REC or to ask that okay, these are our people, please, you know, uh, appoint them, you know, to uh, as your man. So, so it, it, the whole process is such that no human being, you know, as an INEC chairman today, as that organization is can be able to perform effectively so that's why i think uh, i am not in any way speaking for the, the chairman of INEC because we are not happy to what happened you know but we want to be realistic you know as key stakeholders in this uh, project that's why i'm saying some of the things i'm saying because we've taken time to analyze these things and see where is it coming from why is this person failing what has led what has what was for, for the failures that we are witnessing and we found out that, to a very large extent, it's not humanly possible for any one individual to run that system. And that's why you must give it to INEC also. That's why they brought about all these technological uh, innovations in order to streamline the processes and make it you know, uh, more effective. But what has happened? Human intervention again you know, has made it to, not to, uh, to fulfill or to meet the, the objective. You know. so, we are not happy and, and uh, we are not in any way supporting what has happened, that the, the results must stand or people must not go to court. We are saying that this, what has happened, must be addressed. Stolen mandate must be returned to people. And people protesting, asking for the head of national chairman of, I mean, chairman of INEC, to an extent, yes, they are right, because who else do you go to? Who do you blame? But the reality is that no human being, really, can be able to do, uh, 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 you know, better if we do not change the scenario of that organization, the makeup of that organization and the way it's functioning today. So that's, that's the point I want you to understand. The Guardian asked about, uh, okay, the Guardian is one. This day, collection of results and then observation of division. No, there wasn't any division. You know, the IPAC has only one chairman and I was, and I, am, you know, I happen to be the chairman of IPAC. Those who stood up, stood up, you know, and for, for their own party, the way individually they felt at that time. And that's why we now had to call ourselves to remember, you know, our intervention came after what you said happened, happened. It wasn't IMEP, it wasn't IPAC, you know, uh, at, at that point in time that was, you know, uh, speaking. It was when we now summoned a meeting of, of the chairman and we met and we said, well, to save democracy, because there's no way we can allow the, 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 what was about to happen to happen to this country. Because you have to have democracy first before you can even go to court, you know. And that's why we came out and said the process must continue to its musical conclusion. So that we will have something to now interrogate, something to now condemn if we need to condemn it, or something to now press if we need to press it, or something to accept or reject and through the normal process that has been provided for in the Electoral Act itself and the constitution of this country. That's why IPAC did. IPAC did not support INEC in any way. We did not support anything that happened in INEC. What we supported was democracy. We needed to have democracy intact. And the only way we can have it in, intact is when we conclude, you know, and allow the, the, the processes concluded to its logical conclusion. So we can do what we are doing today. If we didn't do that, maybe you may not be here to even ask us about this or that. So that's what we did. And we spoke with one voice, and nobody has come against that stand which we took. So we remain one, you know, as uh, IPAC. Thank you very much.